a corner chat let's talk business with mr daniel steinman is what we will be talking about right now uh this is your power station energy 100 and of course i'm your host is elsa bitibinyani and today we are talking about capital markets and when we say capital markets we also think immediately who the most powerful markets are uh in the world that is economically and this one that jumps to mind and that is of course the usa uh, the united states of america and the relationship between the united states and america um uh and namibia is of course something that usually angers namibians like we wish that we can cut them off but we in can't. actual fact we can't we can't we yeah. can't we can't and mr daniel steinman <laughs> will be giving us more details on the relationship between the usa and namibia so a warm welcome to you mr daniel steinman and of course also a warm welcome to our listeners thank you elsabi thank you um i i said when you and i talked earlier that it's the relationship between the United States capital market and the Namibian capital market yeah. or for that matter between them and the South African capital market mm. or Botswana or whatever you can basically say the relationship between the United States capital market and the rest of the, the rest world, of the world yeah. and we are um, we are now just one of a couple of hundred rest of the world mm, mm. but the impact is never the less still very severe. Mm. And let me explain why. Mm. You will remember that the inflation that scared the world started in in America. Mm. And it started at the end of 2022 and it carried on through 2023 and it is still ongoing. And <coughs> this tended to be the worst inflation since about 1978. So it's a very long time, you know, mm-hmm. almost 50 years, um, the highest inflation. At one point, certain categories in, in the American consumer basket were running inflation as high as 10.8%. Now, also, it's, it's always very striking uh, that where, where the American economy hurts the American consumer the most mm. is at the petrol pump. Mm. They are very sensitive what they pay for fuel. Yeah. Whether it's petrol or diesel, they because they sort of still cling to this notion that they are the major oil producer in the world, which they're not. <laughs> they're the major <laughs> oil consumer in yes. the world. You know, but mm. definitely not the major oil producer in yeah. the world. Mm. But that is the thing. <clears throat> they the ordinary american the everyday american consumer experiences inflation in a variety of ways but where it where it touches them the most um, directly is what they pay for fuel mm. because you know they've they've got this emotional thing about cars and mobility yeah. and the road trip once a year you mm. know and um, their independence in terms of they they can go where they want to go so mm. this is a whole mental thing but when inflation in the United States is too high, then what follows the the conventional mechanism that the central, the Federal Reserve, which is the American Central Bank, that they follow is that inflation must be curbed by higher interest rates, mm. meaning they must bleed liquidity out of the financial system. Mm. And it is effective in the United States. Why? because the inflation is generated in their own economy. Yeah. Unlike with us, where the inflation is not caused by us, it's imported inflation. Mm. You know, we don't control it, we don't cause it, we basically have no say over yeah. it. So, this is now <coughs> the main point, is that inflation in America um, exploded, mm very high very uncomfortable very not lacquer when you fill up your car Uh, so what the federal reserve did belatedly about eight or nine months after the event they started increasing interest rates but aggressively Mm. too fast almost like the bank of namibia did after COVID. too fast too much Mm. 
And then what happened is that you had this major debate in the United States about the interest, the high interest rates, which is the result of the high inflation. Mm. The intention is to to get the inflation down, yeah. to bring price stability back mm. for the the consumer. But there was this debate: yeah, this will this will put the American um, economy into recession, mm. and it didn't happen. The American economy for the last 18 months was as strong as ever. <laughs> and now we need to consider why. And that question we will answer right after this short break.